Hey gang, uh, here I am again. Here I am again. Back in the saddle. Sorry, I turned down my monitor. <laughs> uh, sorry about the terrible wind noise out here. Um, it's just very windy. It's terribly windy. Thus, we have terrible wind noise. <laughs> uh, I am in just outside Norfolk, Virginia, in a little development area called East Beach and at the moment I am standing the sign up here says Little Creek Marina so that's where I am hey Pat yeah Little Creek Marina that's where I am and I'm doing let me show you real quickly what I'm painting more or less is my cars in the way there but two boats Turned down my echo. Yeah, I'm working on it, Ian. Thanks. Uh, two boats and a water tower behind them. It's sort of what I'm aiming for at the moment. So let's start with some drawing. Uh, horizon, first of all. Water tower. Whoops. That's a bit of a globby water tower. Trees. Water tower, trees. Uh, boat. Whoa. Hello, Mark. Good to have you. Um, the wind every once in a while blows so hard that I'm in danger of losing everything. Now, here's a little cheat. I've got a, an old phone here, and I already took a picture of this subject matter and cropped it in a manner that I thought was that I thought was pleasant. Oh, I see now. I've changed my mind. In the in the photograph, I did. I did. Uh, and low and I've changed my mind already now I'm doing in the painting I'm doing horizon high so that won't do me much good let me put that away so much for so much for cheating <laughs> that didn't go very well Forgive me. I feel. I fear that my broadcast is is going in and out. Well, Ian, good good idea. I will absolutely try that again. I have tried that. It it didn't work, but I'll try it again. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for that suggestion. I will try it again. I can't do it today because I don't have a sponge with me. I don't think. But I will definitely try that again. Um, hey i am switching uh sound equipment and let's see if it's any better i don't know if it's going to be better or not Let me test. Can you hear me? Not really. Well, I can't hear me anyway. But that's all right. Maybe you can. Anyway, watch as much as you can stand <laughs> with all the wind noise. <laughs> and then just come back when... <laughs> When the wind dies down, how about that? Let's pretend the wind is going to die down. And yeah.
yes, I've actually decided on this painting to do to do a <clears throat> One nice thing about this strong wind is that the acrylics dry really quickly. In fact, so quickly, hang on. They dry so quickly that, of course, they, they dry out in these, sitting in their little pots here. So let me spray those, try to keep them from drying out too much. But back now to, let's do some more shadow, shadow shading, shading shadow. Once again, even though in, in real life, the sun is completely bathing this parking lot in which I'm standing and is uh, both boats are completely in full sun. Um, I think it would be a much more interesting painting 
if I create a shadow here in the foreground. I'm standing in the shadow as I paint. I'm, stand, I'm standing in the shadow of a big, big, big warehouse building. So all I've done is I just moved the building that direction about 20 feet <laughs> so that it, it hits. <coughs> <clears throat> it's the uh, the parking lot and this boat so I don't want this entire boat in sunlight maybe you've heard me talk about that before I call it the the, uh, the mistake if you don't do that I call it the the porch railing syndrome because that's where I first learned it was when I was many 10 15 years ago when I was painting a porch railing and in in real life <clears throat> the Sun as it is wont to do, <laughs> and the sun was shining on everything <laughs> in its path, in its unobstructed path, in its unobstructed glory. So I painted it the way it was. And in the, this case, I was painting a porch railing. Ooh, there's a tree up here. I just realized. Nice, nice little touch. And, um,. Long story, won't get, tell you, give you the blow by blow, but eventually I discovered, oh, wait a minute. If I don't have the sun hitting the entire porch railing, it's a lot more interesting. So same thing here. Sun in reality, again, I'll show it to you. There's my scene. Okay, there's more or less what I'm painting. And as you can see, sun hitting the whole thing. You can see the shadow down here in the foreground. I'm just moving the shadow of this building 20 feet that direction to make it a much more interesting painting. Does that make sense? Thank you, Ian. I'm reading your question. Good question is, no, there's not. The fat over lean rule only applies to oils, <clears throat> but it definitely, uh, people are, con it, let, me, let me correct, fat over lean is an old statement, an old quote from the olden days of oil painting, bear with me for a minute here, in which basically everybody was painting with nothing but linseed oil. In other words, the medium that everybody used, if they, if they used a medium in their painting, it was linseed oil. Now, that might be a slight exaggeration, but not, it's close enough to exact, to, to, to let stand, okay? And in those days, fat meant you added, was any time you added medium to your paint. Okay? Now, the, the principle still holds true, but we have to change it considerably, okay? These days, I and many, many other oil painters have all kinds of mediums at our disposal. My medium of choice, as you know, is liquid. And um, let me back up. Linseed oil slows down the drying process. So back in the day when everybody was using linseed oil, the rule was fat, that is, linseed oil over lean, that is, Lean is paint thinned or paint straight out of the out of the tube. Okay, um, the real the way the, what we ought to be saying now now that we have all these wonderful mediums at our disposal, it doesn't have the same poetic ring to it. But it's the real fact is uh, slow dry over fast dry. Now, when, when, me, when linseed oil was the medium, then that expression made sense. But now that we have all these other mediums, that expression, fat over lean, does not make sense. The real, the real concern is uh, fast, slow dry over fast dry. In other words, I guess it doesn't have the same poetic ring to it. In other words, you want your underpainting to dry faster than your overpainting. And yes, it matters a whole bunch. <laughs> I actually have it at home. I was thinking about this last night. I need to get this thing out. So a painting that I did about 20 years ago before I, I wasn't an, an oil painter yet, before I knew what the heck I was doing with oil painting. I did this one time. I had a painting that 
and it was a realistic. I'd spent a lot of time on it, and it wasn't drying fast. So I went to the art store and I bought some liquid. This before I knew what I was doing. Did I say that yet? And so I painted liquid on top of this slow drying oil painting. <laughs> well, over the, I kept it. I still have it. It's in my. Um, it, 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 within a couple weeks, it started, of course, showing signs of serious stress. Anyway, it went on over the years to develop like gaps in the, in the in the paint, the cracks. Like as I remember, nearly half an inch wide. I mean, like monster cracks. Like I don't mind. I don't mean like nice little you know Renaissance type. <laughs> Uh, Rembrandt type cracks. No, no, these this was these these were monster cracks, like half an inch wide, I, uh, quarter inch. Anyway, I can't. It's been a while since I looked at it. Um, for a long time, I was too embarrassed to show it. Right now I just think it's hilarious. So I'd be glad to show it to you. Anyway, Ian, thanks for that question. Um, now, what is a concern with uh, acrylics underneath is is, and I've I've had several people ask me about this. Is about the archival quality, the archival properties. Is what I are all my paintings gonna chip, crack, and fall off in a hundred years? And the answer is nobody knows for a hundred years. <laughs> now, I actually wrote a long answer to somebody on my on one of my comments just last week. Because they were they were asking that very question then I gave that very answer we won't know for a hundred years by then it'll be just a little bit late for me to do anything about it <laughs> um, but let me let me give you if again for anybody that especially any of you if you want to try to follow me in this oil over acrylic thing first of all I'd like to point out that 90% of you are doing it already. You're already doing oil over acrylic, most of you. Because if you buy, purchase, buy, at the store, a traditional canvas, that canvas is gessoed in acrylic. It is not gessoed in you buy an oil gesso canvas, which of course some of you might be doing, but most of you are not. You're just buying whatever brand it is, Paragon, and uh, that white gesso is an acrylic base. Most, most of you are doing oil over acrylic already, if, if you're just doing oil. Um, okay, but let me, let me answer the, the question, is my technique Again, this is especially for those of you who might consider trying it. You might be considering trying it. Um, hang on. Okay, so several things that make me think probably I'm, I'm safe. Number one is, generally speaking, my acrylics are fairly thin. <laughs> An exception, for instance, like right there, and when I can, I... I do that to my thick spots, as you know, to help it dry faster. Ooh, let's just do this. Let's just do it. Like that. I, I, I often wish I did this more often, and I usually just forget because I'm busy doing something else. But I, I like that streakiness right there. Uh, okay, so the acrylics are fairly thin. That's one. Now, number two, I start the oil process by glazing the entire canvas with with liquid and I happen to know that liquid is an oil paint medium but it plays very nicely with water liquid likes water very strange in fact if you're hard up sometime and you have only have a tube of acrylic paint but you want to paint in oils um, mix liquid with your acrylic paints and it essentially turns them into oil paints I'm not sure about the archival quality of that no, I'm sure it's fine anyway so a glaze of liquid on top of acrylic, I feel like gives a very strong chemical bond, and uh, that's where the issue would be. And I, so I don't think I think archivally, I'm I'm I think I'm going to be okay. Somebody will kindly 
time travel for me, come back from 100 years in the future and let me know if I'm right. I would very much appreciate it. But my intuition says I'm okay. And, and I'm, I, I, have, I have the kind of intuition about physical things that is usually usually fairly, fairly dependable. Okay, that, uh, that's not dry yet, and I don't want to wait, so I'm going to go ahead and do some drawing, this time in blue. Again, just a little more, little more detail. Each time I draw, I'm doing a little bit more detail. Dark things, dark bits with blue and brown. Again, forgive me for the noise, wind noise. I took my microphone off. It might be working better, I'm not sure. I know it's noisy, and I'm sorry about that. It's noisy to my ears, just, <laughs> just standing out here. It's noisy. <laughs> of you who spend any time at the coast know what I'm talking about. It's that never ending. I like the beach. I like the coast. I'm not sure I'd ever get used to that everlasting wind. Every day, every night, all day, all night wind. I don't know. It seems a little wearisome to me, but obviously I, I don't have the whatever <laughs> the the lure of the sea or something like that, you know? I guess all those few people love the wind. You must. I should have put a I should have put a timer on. I'd like to know when I started this painting. I think it's about twenty five minutes ago. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do as soon as that what I just did, as soon as everything I just did is dry. Help the drying of the process by smearing it. Looks like I'm going to take a little break because I want this to dry. Yeah, it's taking just a few too many minutes. So I'm going to pause here. I'll be back in just a couple of minutes. All right, I'm back. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, I was, <laughs> I, I fooled myself completely. Um, I thought I was waiting for the acrylics to dry so that I could do another layer of acrylics and I was thinking I'm going to do more and then another layer of white and little by little by little the light bulb came on and went, wait a minute, I can do all that in oil so come on, let's get with the program. Let's just <laughs> move right, a, right on ahead. Let's go to oil. So this is of course the, my glazing when I transition from acrylic to oil, the first thing I do is glaze, and the medium that I use, until I find a better one, is Liquin, Winsor Newton Liquin. It's a fast drying, uh, very transparent, as you can see, and um, as a side, little side benefit, Liquin, as I said earlier, plays well with water. So, I don't know, I, 
I know, you know, I don't know enough about acrylics. I mean, I know how they, how to use them, but um, acrylics that have been dry for 10 minutes are is that the same as acrylics that have been dried for 10 days? I don't know, but I sort of suspect not. I don't, I don't know where the time break would be, but I, I would imagine that even with acrylics, there's a difference between dry and cured, as there is with oils. And uh, uh, I'm not sure that's the case, but I suspect that, that there is. So um, what I'm, the point I'm going, going to make is that uh, these acrylics that I just covered up are certainly not cured if there is such a thing. I mean, they're barely dry, barely dry. And, and uh, that's why it's very advantageous that the, the oil painting medium called liquid plays very well, as I like to say, plays very well with water. Uh, so I, I feel fairly confident that my oil over acrylic is fairly archival. I'm using here, which um, maybe you've never seen me possibly use, my Soltec easel. Um, I don't use it very often. I bought it used for my buddy Gary. Got a good deal on it. Because they're kind of expensive if you buy them new. Uh, I don't use it very often, of course, because it 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 does it doesn't hold canvas is large enough for my taste um, and I've modified this one actually a little bit in order to hold larger or hold wider deep canvases one of the real weaknesses of the Soltec system is it, it doesn't hold inch and a half uh, thick canvases so I re-engineered mine to hold thick canvases Forgive me, I don't know if you can even hear me because uh, of the wind out here. Sorry about that. Uh, the only alternative is not to broadcast at all, and that's certainly an option. <laughs> but at the moment, I'm in, having too much fun broadcasting, so I'm going to keep doing it, and I apologize for the bad noise. Okay. So, on, on with the show... Uh, I feel like today, at this point, the traditional step for me is either um, draw with oils, draw with transparent oils and brushes, or draw with pencils. And for, t for some reason today, I'm just, it's very intuitive. I never know exactly why I do which one. It's just, which one do I feel like doing? And today I feel like doing pencils next. And again, I, I've mentioned many times these are Jerry's Artorama Jumbo Jet Black. Uh, my buddy Tom at the Raleigh store, which is their flagship store, I believe, told me that they were a lot like it was a lot like a Conti crayon in pencil form. That sounds like a good description, so. That's what I'm saying. It's an oil-based. Don't uh, a lot of people get confused by that that notion oil-based. Um, it's not an oil marker. It's not a grease pencil. Although I have tried using grease pencils and, and it seems to work fairly well. But um, when I say oil-based, you need to understand that some of the charcoal sticks that you buy uh, at an art store buy charcoal unless you're buying fine charcoal many of the charcoal sticks that you're buying are in fact also uh, oil based so or wax would be maybe the word that would you'd, you'd have less trouble with it's not like it's an you know and it's not like they're an oil stick at all but they're a, a wax based product and the point I was going to make is that they, these, again, rather serendipitously, <laughs> these uh, pencils play very nicely with both oil and acrylic. Um, 
like right now that I'm now that I'm drawing in a in an oil soup this that glaze that I just put on uh, the the pencils slide they're kind of slippery um, you can tell that the oil the liquid is reactivating the uh, the grease or the the wax in the pencil a little bit it's actually quite a pleasant you know it feels it feels good it feels like oh yeah it's um i don't think i i don't think and again i've had people ask me about the what do i think about the archival quality of these using these pencils well if you could try it one time if you could feel what i'm feeling here um the sensation is not that i'm laying a waxy greasy pencil on top of the painting uh, the feeling is very much that the the liquid is interacting with the pencils and turning it into paint very much oh, they, yeah perfect analogy very much like uh, watercolor pencils do you know when you when you put down a watercolor pencil line I say this as though you, all of you have done this. You should do it. <laughs> when you put make a line, when you draw a mark with a watercolor pencil, and then you put water on top of it, it completely activates the pencil line. That's the way this feels. So that again, that's why I feel pretty confident about the archival quality of these pencils because I'm basically they get they get turned into paint. Does that make sense? So anyway, just again for those of you who maybe might be thinking about imitating my technique which I, I I really do like my technique I gotta tell you um, hey it might be kind of fun if the winds not too bad yesterday I, I mentioned this very briefly how I how I got into this how I stumbled upon this technique and let me just mention that stumbling upon stumbling on things is the best way in the world to grow as an artist I believe I mean you can learn things from me you can learn things from teachers and so on and so forth but the really great in my opinion the really great aha moments in your painting journey happen uh, is while while you're working you just you stumble on something aha Wow, that that kind of that that's those are golden moments, man. You wanna you wanna look for those. You wanna you can't make them happen, but yet you can be alert to their their occurrence. Um, so sure, a little bit of story. I I, I uh, you know a couple years ago, not that long ago, I went through a little bit of an identity crisis. <laughs> that's putting it too strongly, but. Um, you know, I looked at all these plain air painters, especially like, and I'll, I'll use I'll use Kevin McPherson as kind of like, you know, one of the kings in America, one of the kings of plain air painting, Kevin McPherson. If you don't know him, you should know him just because everybody else knows him. He's like he's like one of the big biggest of the big dogs. If 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 you catch what I mean. Um, and I look at Kevin McPherson's stuff, and he's he's wonderful, and he's also, in my from all I can tell, a very nice man, uh, self-effacing, very funny sense of humor. I've been in his presence. Never took a class, but I've been I've seen him do a couple demos, and uh, just a lot of fun. Very nice man. So he's one of those guys that you don't feel bad saying good things about. Do you know what I mean? He's <laughs> just like go, Kevin, man, love you. And that, that's uh, that's the way I feel about Kevin McPherson. Like, you go, man. I'm so glad you're one of the best painters in America, so to speak, because you sure are a nice guy. Anyway, there you go. Uh, but anyway, I was going through a, kind of an identity crisis a couple years ago because I looked at all the plain painters, and I look at my stuff and go, man, I am so different. I mean, weird. The, the, weird, the world has to be. I'm weird. <laughs> And uh, sometimes I honestly think, I can't prove this, but I strongly suspect that sometimes I do not get into plain air events, competitions, simply because my stuff looks so different. It doesn't look like Kevin McPherson. 
And when I say look like Kevin McPherson, what I really mean is, does it look like Kevin McPherson and all of his <laughs> imitators? <laughs> okay, hang on. Just let me let me stop this story for a minute. I like this. <laughs> I could stop right there. If that was my style, if that was my style of painting, I could call it quits right there and say I'm done. But it's not quite my style of painting, so don't feel like I have. Okay, I'm, I'm all the way down to the painting small as night. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm liking this painting small stuff. <laughs> Dang, it'll be done in an hour. Um, last layer. Well, not really. I could do the glow layer. Anyway, never mind. Won't, won't last layer. Either sky or lightest stuff or focal point or local color. Local color is fine. Sky, low, lightest or focal point. Um, and I'm not sure if the focal point's here or here. I really think it's going to be here. Um, okay. Just for sake of variety then, I'm going to... I haven't, for a while, I haven't started my final layer at the focal point, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so um, I went through a, a little bit of a crisis. Not much. <laughs> it only lasted a couple months, and uh, but I, I came out in the end going, you know what? No, it's okay that I'm weird. Um, but let me tell you how I got so weird. It's fairly simple. I was an art major in college. That was in the early and mid '70s. At the time, all the professors. And they were a lot more, generally speaking, into abstract expressionism. So they did not teach me much about painting at all, as you can imagine. The problem with abstract expressionism rests in the expressionism half of the phrase. Nothing wrong with abstract. Lots, in my opinion, lots wrong with expressing, considering, considering self-expression to be a primary function of visual art. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Okay, so, um, and because of that, because they were all into abstract, mostly into abstract expressionism, they they were in love with this new stuff, fairly new stuff, called acrylics. Okay, this early 70s. And uh, I tried painting in acrylics. I ended up being a watercolor major. But I hated acrylics. They, just, they did not fit my personality at all. And uh, I then I went on for to be, for most of the next 20 years, 25 years, uh, a freelance illustrator, mostly. And uh, virtually never used acrylics, because I, I just don't like them, don't like the way they act, and so forth. It doesn't fit my personality, it doesn't fit my, what I want to do as a painter. And, uh, but about 20 years ago, it was actually a, a large, a big church, one of the, a mega church in Raleigh, invited me to teach a week of art classes. It was part of their fine arts emphasis. Good church, good people. Um, and they invited me to come and teach art classes. And they said, I had about 25 students, and it was like five, five nights in a row, quite, quite a big, I didn't realize at the time how extraordinary that was. I've never had a five-day class ever since then. Uh, and they said, at the end of the class, we would like it if, if the class could produce a piece of art that we could hang on the wall, a big painting. I was known at the time already, I'm still known, but I was known at the time for doing these eight by 10 foot paintings, you know, out in public and so on. And uh, so they said, we'd like, you know, we'd like to, at the end of the class to have a big painting put on our wall. Well, that certainly threw me into a conundrum because I don't know if you've ever tried this, you know, a whole bunch of students doing a painting, beginners, intermediate <laughs> students. <laughs> So I scratched my head and said, oh my goodness, what in the world am I going to do? If I let these people all do a big painting, it's going to be ugly as whatever. So it dawned on me, wait a minute. I don't, and then again, I don't know what made me think of this, but I thought, okay, wait a minute. If I were to do 
the basic drawing of the painting in black acrylic and then have all the students uh, mix up batches of transparent acrylics to go on top of what I do in black. You see, I, I understood that their transparent could not obliterate my black. I would do all the black work. It was sort of like, you know, coloring book style, a little bit, except of course, a lot more sophisticated and a lot of fun. It worked, anyway. When, when I began to see these students doing layers of transparent acrylics on top of my black underpainting, I had an epiphany. I had an aha moment, like, oh my goodness, look at that. And in, in a day, my what distaste for... Uh, acrylics crumbled because of this one factor which I had never really considered and that is transparent acrylics. When I saw what transparent acrylics looked like, I didn't know it at the time but it was changing my life. I knew I was impressed. I knew I was blown away at the moment. I knew I was pleased with what I was seeing. I didn't realize it was going to launch a career which in effect it has. So that's how I got started. It was a class project, and um, that's how I discovered the magic of transparent acrylics, which is a pretty good description. Hello, <laughs> I have company here. I'm gonna hang up on you guys for a little while so I can visit with my company. And uh, I'm almost done with this. Maybe not. Thanks for watching. Are we on? We are. Hey. Hey, gang. Um, <laughs> so, sorry. The last painting that I you watched me, um, I finished it. It's gone. It's in my car. My wife's driving my car far away. So, I don't... <laughs> and in the meantime, I've done a, a real quick little painting. Um, I'll just zoom in for this for a minute. There you go. I'm sorry. I didn't even let you watch me do that one. This is, by the way, the smallest canvas that I brought with me. I usually paint big. It's ridiculously small, but it was kind of fun. And I'm doing it my second smallest one, I think, or third here. Um, I'm going to do right now this view right about like that. That's what I'm going to paint. And um, if... And if my wife were here, she'd be saying, what? <laughs> Just like half of you are saying right now, what? <laughs> You're painting what? <laughs> okay, and I did I did tromp around for a while and, and see if I really wanted to paint that. And I decided that I did. Okay, let's start with some. I do have a formula. There's times that a formula really helps because I don't have to sit here and waste time thinking about what to do first. So I'm going to do... <laughs> Some abstract marks that are completely unrelated to the subject matter. Okay, good enough, that's done. I like these small paintings, man. I really knock them out quickly. I'm going straight now to drawing, and basically the same color. First pass at drawing. I'm, uh, by the way, sitting out here on a gravel parking lot and sitting, not standing. And I've got an umbrella over my head because it is pure, as you can probably tell, sun. Pure sun blistering, glistering down on me. And so I'm under an umbrella, but the umbrella is like poking me in the back of the head. 
as we <laughs> as we speak. So I can't really I can't really back up any further from my painting than I am right now. My nose is rather pushed into my painting, <laughs> so to speak, and uh, not much place for me to go. Now, what attracted to me this me to this scene is just the the, the graphic. Really, really the strong graphic composition. White boat against dark foliage and the dark foliage against white boat. And um, what do you think about that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that's where I want all this. I'm not sure that this composition is where I want it. Do just a little bit more so I can see. There's our stairs. There's an ice machine under here, which is a nice little touch, I think. Um, I'm wondering if there's enough of the boat in the in the scene. Well, I wish there was. Will I be wishing there was more boat? No, I don't think so. I think that might be all right. That composition might be all right. So. I'll proceed for a minute. The air is nice and dry out here today. Which is great for making the acrylics dry fast. Okay, let me draw a little bit more then. There's a, I don't know what you call it, widow's watch cupola at the top of this building, which is actually a little bit outside the frame but I'm gonna move it over just a little bit because I feel like having it violate the uh, top of the um, canvas is important I had a funny thing happen a couple weeks ago one of my galleries called me and said hello Dan we have some people here who are looking at one of your paintings and they really like it a lot it was a it was a skyline of downtown Raleigh. You can see me paint it. Uh, you can watch me paint it a week or two ago. And they were wondering if you could paint another one. <laughs> are, are you recognizing this tone of voice that I'm using here? We were wondering. They were wondering if you could paint another one where you showed the whole building. So there's tall buildings in down like any city, you know, there's tall buildings downtown. And as is normal when I paint anything tall, um, uh, if you know this is that this is normal, but it is. As is normal, um, I had the tops of those buildings punching through the top of the canvas, right? Why would I do that? <laughs> Well, because when you make, for a number of reasons, one of which is if you want something to look like it's tall, you're painting a lighthouse, right? If you want it to look like it's really tall, the Eiffel Tower, something like that, you don't paint the whole thing. In fact, you, uh, you show the very top of it punching through the top of the canvas. That makes it look taller. Um, of course, people don't know that, but <laughs> evidently the, the effect was completely lost on these buyers. But the really funny part was they wondered, like the canvas that they were looking at was 24 by 30. And they were wondering, well, would it be possible... That, that tone of voice again. Would it be possible for you to paint it on a slightly larger canvas? Can you guys hear this? I wonder if you could paint it on a slightly larger canvas so that we could see the top of the, the tops of the buildings. <laughs> now at that point, at that point, I really had to laugh. <laughs> In other words, like see this, the building, like here, the, the top of this building is going off the canvas. So they were wondering if I could just buy a taller canvas and then they could see the top of this building. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's probably only funny to my fellow artists. Um, 
as if, as if, you know, as if a, a number of things, as if I missed the top of the building because I ran out of cameras. <laughs> I'm sorry. Having laughter at the expense of somebody who's not very visually astute. I already talked, I already scolded myself one time today or yesterday for, for doing such things. <laughs> laughing at people that aren't visually sensitive. <laughs> that is just too funny. So could you buy a little bit bigger canvas and paint the tops of the buildings? <laughs> oh, oh, oh my goodness. Hilarious. Fun, fun, fun. Fun activities. Thank <laughs> you. 